apply those things that are written. There are many things that we could uh, talk to us about, many things that we could uh, turn out the Bible to to encourage us. But it's nothing like going to the book of Ecclesiastes and hearing the wisdom of Solomon. We appreciate, Brother Bishop, our, our minister, so much. He's done a great job, doing a great job. We got other men that's capable of teaching, Brother Slam, and Brother Herbert, and Brother Ty. And we got a lot of sisters that's capable of teaching. And that's good. You know, churches uh, really come along a great way. We even now got a youth minister Amen. working with our young people. And you can see the church growing in leaps and bounds. And we appreciate that so much when we got uh, a church like that. Amen. You know, uh, all the time you can all the time you can go different places and you can see different things and we are we, we brag about what the big church is doing, what the big church is doing. Well, I want you to know the little church is doing something different. <laughs> we're, just, we're just not sitting here, but we're doing a great job, and I, I appreciate that so much. Uh, we're going to be talking about the whole duty of man. Uh, I noticed Brother William we went back to chapter 1 and verse number 13 that we might take a view of the uh, social reveal. We go through some stuff in this life. <clears throat> Sometimes we go through some stuff or pull us away from God. Sometimes we go through some stuff that we bring on ourselves. Amen. Right. Amen. But you know, we go through it anyway. You know, after I read this uh, chapter, uh, many times as I've read it, it really didn't really click on me until I read it again. And uh, I thought about Solomon and his wisdom, how that he done what he could to teach the people. Uh, a lot of times, folk don't want to be taught. They know right from wrong, but they don't want to be taught. And sometimes we uh, get upset and get angry, but if you look at this, if you look at this text, these things are, are the right things to be done, the word of truth, because they come from God. They're not from man. Sometimes they cut us. They reach down into our heart and, and prick our hearts and our minds, and, and sometimes we get upset when they be talked to us. And, uh, you know, but regardless of whether we get upset or whether we Run out of the building, the board, they're still going to say the same thing. Amen. It's not going to change. Uh, in verses number 13 uh, of this text, chapter 12, Solomon is finishing in his sermon. He was a preacher. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. But this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work unto judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. I don't know if you looked at that last verse, but God is going to bring forth everything. Whether you are a deacon, whether you are an elder, whether you are a preacher, whether you are a member of the church, he's going to bring everything to judge the whole duty of man. Now, as I said, this passage is not a passage that comes from men, but it is uh, divinely inspired. The Bible teaches us that all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. Amen. They are profitable. And then he shows what they're profitable for, for instruction, that the man of God may be thoroughly 
punish unto you for good work. I don't mean just because you hear a sermon, uh, you hear a class being taught that you're going to apply it to your life. You, sometimes it's like back in 1950, when the young people would say, I hear you, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to do what you say. Y'all don't remember that, but I do. Because I don't want them to say it that. When we look at the term duty, you always hear them say, consider the source. Mm -hmm. Well, you better consider the source on this one because this, this is not coming from me. This is coming from God. Amen. You need to consider the source. Because when Paul talks to the Thessalonians, he says, God is going to be revealed with flame and fire, taking vengeance upon them that obey not God. And that's the Christians and not Christians. Sometimes we as Christians, we get so comfortable that we let things just pass through our air. Just pass it right on over our head. Very good old. You know, since I'm, I've been baptized into the church, I've been, I go to church every Sunday, they just let me finish and let me loose. I can do whatever I feel like I want to do. It don't work like that. When God speaks to man, he must respond in obedient love. Because it shall determine where we shall spend eternity. You know, had you ever thought about that? John says in John chapter 12 and verses 48, the same words that spoken to us shall be the same words that's going to judge us in the last days. So if it's going to judge me, I want to try to at least be halfway right, at least working on it or something. So I don't mind folk telling me when I'm wrong. If you tell me something that, and you know it's right, and you don't tell me, God will hold you responsible. Mm -hmm. Then he's going to hold me responsible for not responding after you done told me. Mm -hmm. God is going to judge each one of us. The things we think that are secret, nobody knows it but us. God knows. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he got it down in his book. He said every secret thing is going to be brought forth. I don't know too many folks in this building today, I look over this audience, that don't know right from wrong. I look over here right now, I don't know, he, uh, even my little grandbaby, she's not that old, she knows the difference between right and wrong. That's right now. Now, Brother Richard here, he can look at her in a certain way and clear throat up in a certain way and she'll look at him and then she'll ease on back over there and sit down. She knows what's going to happen. Yeah, she don't do what, what she's being told to do. God has a way home for us. Aren't you glad that God has a way home for you? When you mess up, when you do those things that you're not supposed to do, aren't you glad God fixed it that you can come back home? Because if you get too far from home, you could be in some serious trouble. I remember I was a young boy and I went fishing with my grandfather and it was raining. And I told him I didn't want to go, but he said, well, we would get out there in between the showers and set out some truck lines and on our way back home, we got to rain in real hard, but we didn't make it home. The bridge that we had to come across was washed out. All the time you go out there in that world, don't mean you're going to be able to come back home. There may be some stuff out there that catch you out there that you don't make it home. But if you come home, they may bring you home in a box. God knows our needs. And we need to bow our heads to God and give him thanks for all the benefits, all the blessings that he's given us. Amen. God has really given us some blessings. Amen. Just think about it. Where you are now, you haven't always been there. <coughs> The blessing that you're receiving today, you haven't always had those blessings. Amen. I know some of us are going through sickness. Some of us are going through death. Some of us are going through some trials and tribulations. But God has been good for us. And, and God stands ready to continue to bless us. Our duty is more than sitting 
on the benches every Sunday. Oh, y'all, that's not what y'all thought it was? <laughs> oh, so we got some folks just come out and sit down on the bench and sing a few songs and throw a few dollars in the place. They think that's it. Oh, man, I got a surprise for you. Amen. It's more than that. Oh, yeah. You know, until this church become an active church, and when I say church, I'm talking about all of us, until we become an active church, getting involved not only with the core, but reaching outside of these walls and touching the lives of men and women, we're going to miss them all. We have this thing of beauty spelled out to us in the Bible. And our souls is going to be required. I want somebody, if you will, to turn over to Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18 and 20. We'd be over there. If you, if you straight in with us, please turn your Bibles and make a notation in your Bibles uh, on this chapter. Now listen, somebody begin to read that was Isaiah. Chapter 1, verses 18 and 20. Yeah. Come on, brothers, the tape is running. Come now and let us reason together. Come now and let us reason together. Says the Lord. Says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet. Though your sins be as scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. They shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson. Though they be red like crimson. They shall be in wool. If ye be willing, if ye be willing and, obedient, and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. You shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse, but if you refuse and rebel, and rebel you shall be devoured with the sword. Oh yeah, that's some consequences. That's some consequences. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The Lord of the mouth. Mm -hmm. Did you notice what it says? Come now. That's an action. That's an action on all the Bible for. I got to come. You got to come. Every one of us must live and die for ourselves. Amen. God invites us to take action on what he tells us. Uh, sin itself throws us off track. Uh, you know, all of us don't look at sin the same way. We, we, we kind of see sin like a big sin, a little sin. Uh-uh. It don't work like that. Man. Sin is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. God talked to prove man. He said, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, but he didn't do it the will of my Father. In Luke 9 and verse 23, Jesus said to them, if a man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Man. You know, following Jesus it is not a piece of cake. Following Jesus means that we have to give up some stuff. It may, you know, it may be the stuff that you lack. It may be the stuff that you don't got comfortable in doing. Sometimes we get comfortable in doing some stuff. We've been doing it so long, we don't see nothing wrong with it. But, you know, God look at that. And we just don't put God on the back burner. We get caught up in the stuff that we can't take the heaven with us. Man. You think all that stuff that's going on in our life, we can take the heaven with us? No, 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 no. Man. We just can't take it to heaven with us. Uh, the question on the floor, should the Lord come today, today, this very day, where shall we spend eternity? <clears throat> That's not only to me, it's to all of us. It may, it may be a joke to you. It may be a joke to you, maybe you don't think that you're going to go on to the other side. But the Bible says, it is appointed that the man wants to die, and after this comes the judgment. Uh, you just thought Brother Bishop and Brother Time, myself, and all of the teachers just get up here for the fun of it and get a check? <coughs> oh, no, it don't work like that. You're going to have to give an account for this stuff. I want you to mark your Bible in 2 <coughs> Peter, chapter 3 and verse number 10. There's some stuff that will cloud up our view 
And sometimes we, we do things and we get, we chase the rainbow. There's nothing wrong with chasing the rainbow. There's nothing wrong with having the American dream. But don't let it lead you away from Christ. It's good to have a good job. It's good to have an education. It's good to have a nice car. It's good to have a, a you know, a nice home. But if you get caught up in that, <clears throat> and it leads you away from God, you'd have gone too far. Amen. Because it's going to be God that's going to be the only one to say. Look what Peter said. Second Peter 3 and 10, what does it say? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. He's going to come unexpectedly. God's going to come as a thief in the night. All right. And you wish the heaven shall pass away? Oh. 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 <clears throat> You look out there in the sky right now. You go out tonight, you see those beautiful stars out there, the moon. You see that beautiful sun out there, the snow falling sometimes. All of that's going to be burned up. Here's where John put it. He said, the bond men, the free men, will be running to the mountains, crying, hide us from God. God is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. Since we don't know when God is coming, since we don't know when he's going to return, we need to change our thoughts and our lives. Yeah. You know, now get ready to take us home now. I want us to look at the duty of man. Our duty to God is to worship him in spirit and truth. Is to seek heaven and to seek his righteousness. Lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. You know, sometimes we forget where we are and where we're trying to go. <clears throat> you might just think, hey, listen, I'm going to take me a trip uh, this summer uh, out of town and take me a nice vacation and sit back on the beach and just enjoy myself. Well, after you get through all of that, <coughs> and the Lord shall call you home, what else will you enjoy? What will you have to enjoy? If you don't have heaven to enjoy, you know what's next, don't you? Amen. Jesus said that we, we might live <coughs> and we might die but we can't live and die without the Lord. You know, Jesus came on a long time ago and he hang on a cross that you and I might have the right to forgive us for our sins. And you know, we mess up. We mess up whole, whole big time. But it's good, Brother Carter. Hey, when I mess up, I can go to the Lord. You may not forgive me. And I may not forgive you, but God, he said, in Acts 3 and 19, he said, he erases, blotted out all the sins. He cleaned them up. Huh? That don't mean I can keep on doing it, though. Sure. Just because I mess up don't mean I can just keep on messing up. But he gave me a chance after chance after chance after chance. Aren't you glad he gave you a second chance? Amen. The whole beauty of man is to remember God, our creator. To remember that Jesus came and died on the cross. To remember that he suffered for us and he paid it all for us. And most of all, when we get at a certain stage in our lives, we, 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 we need to look it over. Because he only promised us three scores and ten. And some don't make it that far. Now, I mean, I look around me and I see young people being cut out. I, I, you know, I watch SWAT a lot on TV. I watch the Dallas police on the TV. I see a lot of our young men, a lot of our men, middle-aged, a lot of our women being cut out because they're chasing those things out there that's going to get them cut out. I see some of our young ladies get caught up with some of them hooks out there. Get their lives all messed up. Yeah, they get their lives messed up. They think that, hey, listen, I got this hunk out of here. You drive this Mercedes and 
And when they know that thing, he's off for some other woman. Y'all yeah, didn't hear me, did you? Y'all didn't hear me, did you? Y'all didn't hear me. You need to listen to this. I'm telling you what's right. I'm not telling you something that I, I mean, I don't know about. I see these things every day. I see marriages being broke up. I see homes being torn apart. I see our children. We raise them up in the way they should go. But they get out there and get peer pressure, and then it flourish them, and it draws them away. This is, you know, that's why we should fear God. Amen. And keep his command. When you know the difference between right and wrong, when you know what God said, to him that know it to do good, and do it that not, to him that becomes a sin. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Now, now listen to Solomon. The conclusion of the matter is to fear God and keep his commitment. Don't worry about what I say. Because I'm not the one who will send you to heaven or hell. you got to fear God and keep his commitment. Because he's going to be the one when you come before the judgment seat. I said, we've done a good job in raising the bar. We're doing a good job in raising the bar, but are we doing all that he called for us to do? Do we just come to a certain part, kind of like McDonald's, we, we order the cheese and no burgers? That's the kind of religion we got. Uh, we like Burger Kings and cut the sauce and put on mayonnaise and mustard. You know, some folks just put on that face when they come out to church. But God knows our hearts. And if God knows, I'm not, I'm not trying to yell at you. I'm not trying to uh, get you all stood up, make you jump all over the benches. I'm just trying to exhort them to do better. Because I know we can. Amen. I know we can. I said we're doing good. But you know we can do better. Amen. It's getting kind of time now that we can go out into the communities and church the lives of those who have never obeyed the gospel. You know what the gospel is. You know it's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We come by faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. You say, whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. But he that deny me before men, him will I deny before my Father, which is in heaven. If you're here this morning and you have not been baptized in Christ, we will encourage you to come forward. If you're a member of the church, we will encourage you to come forward. Sometimes you, you're making your confession. Sometimes you're making your uh, asking for prayer. We, we can't hear what you say. I know God hears you, but how am I going to pray for your need? you back there. I don't know what the word you say. Man. Come on now. Yeah. Be honest with me. Amen. You know, uh, Brother William, he can't hear as good as he is. <laughs> you may want him to pray for you. Brother Matt, brother myself, we can't hear it as good as we used to. So we need to hear what you say. That was the time when we all used to come forward. Y'all remember that, don't you? Amen. What happened? We just got lazy out. I know I can understand if someone got arthritis or they laid some mess stuff. But you know, there's nothing wrong with coming forward. Let God know what's on your heart. This is a good day. And this is the day the Lord has made. Amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. While we together stand, we want to encourage you to come.